Hi, everyone, and welcome to Rising Stories Podcast. I'm Kareen Sandifer, and I'm your host. In this podcast, I interview a business owner or author, and what makes this business podcast unique is that my interviews are with women owners and writers. And as you know, every woman has a story to tell. So here on Rising Stories, they get to tell that story, along with some great tips on how to run your business or write your book. You get to hear women from all walks of life. I love hearing their stories, and I know you will too. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. Next week, I have some special guests. I have invited a couple of past guests and friends to chat about Christmas. Hear all about what we do and what we serve on the tables and what we give to our kids and ourselves. So make sure you're listening. Today on the show, I interview one of my dearest friends, Dr. Robin Gould. She is a licensed marriage and family therapist. She holds a doctorate degree in religious education, and she specializes in attachment therapy. And she has written two books. Robin and I talk about her speaking engagements and how she's purposeful in her rest and how we seem to run out of time during, the, during our days. Here is my conversation with Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for, for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on Rising Stories. I'm excited. I'm excited, too. I think these are wonderful, and I'm just so proud of you. Oh, thank you. Well, so you and I know each other in real life. We have been friends for years. Like, how long has it been? I can't even think. It's been years. 10 years? 15 years? 10 years? Yeah, I'm thinking 15. I'm thinking 15. Yeah, it's been a long time. And, you know, what were you doing when I first met you? Were you writing books? And I know you were going to school. Yes, or you were already a therapist when I met you. I was already, I already had my master's, so I was already a therapist, and I was, I had a private practice um, at that time, and we met at church, of course, yep. um, and then, and then I went on and got another degree. So I've been in school for like a hundred years, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> and you just got your doctorate. So yes. So congratulations on that. Thank and, you. Like when you see, this is how how like I'm not so far removed from you know the education world so like when you get a doctorate is it in a specialized area like I mean I know it's in a specialized area but it does it have like a title a doctorate of something something like yes so what I have is um I wanted an education to um, doctorate because mm-hmm. I teach so my actual doctorate is a doctor of religious education okay which is a fairly broad like I don't know everything about every religion (laughs) so it's much more broad than it (laughs) actually is the subtext of my degree is um is a doctor of religious education in Hebraic health psychology so my focus was on health psychology from a Hebraic sense, which is a more holistic, systemic way of looking at things, um, which I think is healthier. And so um, that's kind of what I have focused on in that. So were you, are you focusing on, when you say Hebraic, so that's like in the Hebrew culture? Right. That would be in, in the Hebrew culture, which would be sort of the dynamic that Christianity springboarded off from just that whole right. first century attitude and understanding. Um, so my focus is always going back to that first century, finding what was salient to them, what they understood, how they lived and getting back to a more organic understanding of the Bible from that cultural perspective, okay. because we more a lot in our Western sort of segmented compartmentalized mindset from this holistic communal sort of a view. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of words for, for saying, just kind of getting back to that first century view. Okay. Okay. And when you got your, um, so how are you using that? Are you doing, you, did, you know, you did your, like, did you have to do a dissertation and, and how did you, are you still using some of that research for your books? Like, yes, you actually. That's such a good question. Yes, actually it is. Um, <laughs> because one of the main reasons I wanted to get the degree uh, was to teach, obviously, and to be to have credentials to teach, particularly as a woman. You want to have that extra mm-hmm. 
few letters there. Um, but uh, one of the things that was my main goal was helping people to attach to God in a way where they felt very detached and that they didn't really understand um, him as an attachment figure. So my dissertation was basically on attachment. And uh, what I did was I actually focused on the dietary laws. That was um, where I went through all the first century letters and did research on each one and put them together as one cohesive sort of um, understanding of just that one particular topic because it interested people um, so that they could attach to God even through that. So it's just, that's basically, so I, so I actually use a lot of my dissertation research to this day. I've made all these PowerPoints when I, when I travel and teach, I teach in PowerPoint generally because it prompts me and it's nice to have visual aids for people. They like mm -hmm. that. Um, so I think it makes the teaching a little more dynamic for me. So I do use a lot of that actually. It's been very helpful. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so your books are, you have two books is that right i think i've lost count maybe yes i have two that just uh ha that that i have on amazon now and then i have one i'm just finishing we've just did the cover and i'm just finishing i guess getting my eyes be for that and that'll be out um maybe a week or two and then i contributed to another book that um just came out that's kind of a big book and i was not the author but i just contributed to it and i believe strongly in it so i like mm -hmm. to always mention that oh wow and um how do you how do you write like when do you find time in your day to write and and what what does that look like for you what does that process well, look like that is another good question because that's very specific for me how i write um i'm one of those people that i'll wake up in the morning and i will be at my best and i can write like crazy and and, and it's not unheard of for me to forget to eat all day if i start writing i'm done i i'm just off in my own world doing my work and i'll almost write until i'm car sick like mm. from you know that feeling like yeah because i i use uh, logos bible software and going through books and just everything so i will forget to eat and i'll just be so focused if i'm starting writing at four o'clock in the afternoon i'm not going to do well I'm not going to finish it. I'm going to not feel good about what I did. So I'm really one of those all or nothing people. I'm going to get to it and get it, get, get some stuff done early mm -hmm. or I'm probably washing that day off and just not doing even something else. Yeah. Yeah. Doing something else. Yeah. 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 So what time do you get up typically like early? So Are you early? I wake up early and pray mm -hmm. and that I don't mm -hmm. probably get writing until, um, Till, till people are kind of busy and scuffling around the house. So I, pro I probably start writing by nine. Mm -hmm. And, and when, I, when it's a writing day, when I'm not traveling, I'll write for a good four to five hours just without lifting my head and just wow. get that done. And, that's, that's, and then I feel so good about that. Like I'm so happy. Yeah. I did. And then there's other days I just cannot get there. I just can't do it. And so... I have to do other things, but those are the, so I'm giving you the best case scenario. Mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. So on a day where you're not writing, what are you doing? You said you travel. So sometimes you're traveling. Yes, I do travel, which is basically a lot of airports and a lot of hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll meet people, of course, and do teaching. T generally, that's an evening teaching at, at a fellowship or an afternoon or sometimes on a, a Shabbat, a, a, a Saturday teaching at a fellowship. Um, or just even a Wednesday night regular church service. Um, I'll go and do that. It just depends what, it, what I need. Mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, so if I'm traveling, that's what that looks like. And if I'm and if I'm home, I'm thinking, um, what else am I doing? So a lot of study. So I tr try to get a lot of study done. You know, and I'm one of these people too. I think that the days really get away from me. Have you ever had just three days and you felt like you did nothing, but mm -hmm. you were the whole time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, every day. No. Yeah, I, I just I have those days. What did I accomplish? You know, but I was busy, really, really busy. But yeah, that was my. What's today? Tuesday. So that was my Monday. That was my this past Monday. It was like I spent all day just lugging around my computer. I had to go check my computer out at the store, and they were going to fix it, and they did. And But it just seemed like all day long I did nothing. I, 
I was, I work for a company and I was able to change my password because something, you know, I have to change my password and I let it lapse. I can so relate to that. Oh my gosh. That was it. Now, how, how does that happen? Of course, you know, I do have to, you know, in the meantime, I'm like, I do walk the dog and stuff like that. But, you know, then it's like, I didn't do anything. But it's yeah, just crazy. So, so I get it. Yeah, I get You get to the store, you wait in line, then you have to do the banking. And then I forgot my wallet. So I have to go home and get my wallet, go back to the bank. And then, you know, you're just having this day just, oh, uh, yeah. It's so one of those I, days. The really successful days where I feel like I accomplished a lot. And then I have the days that make me appreciate the days that I accomplished a lot because I am yeah. more more scattered. I have better, better times of, of, of focus than others. I, I, I think people that, um, color outside the lines tend to be that way in general yeah. extremes. I think that's normal. I think that's normal for everybody in my book. I mean, I think, you know, even, you know, even teachers that are in public schools have bad days. You know, you think, Oh, teachers are always on, you know, or anybody or doctors, they're always on. You know, but I'm sure they're having bad days, too. You just hope you're not the patient (laughs) having that bad day. (laughs) No, I think that they're like, I mean, bad days as in like, I don't feel like I'm getting anything done, but they did do something, you know, but. Yes. Well, one thing that is probably the most helpful part for me to be able to pace myself, I'm not, I'm a procrastinator to horrible lengths. It's just an issue I I confront all the time, but I do, I am a Sabbath keeper. So we have a week that's very particular in the way that we pace ourselves. So Mm -hmm. the first day of the week for us is Sunday. And so what happens is we do have a planning mechanism in place that's sort of communal where Thursday is extra groceries. Friday is super cleaning and getting ready so that you're cooked a double amount of food so that on on Shabbat, you're just relaxing. You're not cooking. You're not having to clean. You're just kind of being set apart and doing and and letting go of everything else. Mm -hmm. So having that has actually really helped me in terms of at least running my house in a way that feels cohesive. Yeah. Um, Because within that, I'll be extreme in every other way, um, not not getting things accomplished. So that's probably the thing that helped me the most stay on track. If I can say I'm on track, it's only because that part is on track. Mm -hmm. That's good. (laughs) I feel it. Yeah. I, I love being, you know, intentional with each day. Like this is the day I do this and this is the day I do that. It just keeps me, it keeps me going. So I can imagine that. Yeah. When you're doing, you know, preparing for your Sabbath that you, um, you know, make sure you have all your ducks in a row and getting everything together so that you can enjoy it and relax. So, yeah. Well, yeah, and what- it also helps emotionally, I think, too, because I can pace myself emotionally even. I know how I always feel on Fridays. So if I'm feeling a different way, I can ask myself, what's wrong with you? Where I'm able to with a schedule, I'm able to recognize something's off, what's wrong, and I'll be able to confront with, uh, well, maybe that conversation with that person has really gotten to me, or maybe whatever that might be, um, helps me get more in touch with something. So I think that's helpful, too. Yeah, yeah. And so you are a mom, and you are a wife. And so you're taking care of the household stuff, but you've both of your kids are grown and they're gone or they well yes in process so my older son moved to australia a month ago oh wow which has been very hard i miss him that 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 kid i miss him uh he's 22 so he's not a kid but um and then my my younger son uh daniel actually enlisted in the united states marine corps wow so he's been in training for that and he leaves for recruit training um just at the end of this month. So in a couple of weeks, I'll be dropping him off for oh. three years. So that's really hard. For but three years? Well, oh, four man. years. He'll four be years. For, yeah. So they do three um, months of recruit training, and then he'll be stationed somewhere. So mm-hmm. I'll see him for 10 days in between that. And then then who knows where he'll be sent wow. away. So that, that's a tough one for me, actually. <laughs> that is hard. Yeah. I can't imagine. But that's what he wants to do. So he's excited. Yeah, see, you know, you dread it, but you're excited at the same time because yeah. Marine Corps training is uh, extra hard. Yeah, and it's no joke, it's, I'm sure. 
Yeah. No joke. Yeah, that's I've read the articles and had to make myself stop <sighs> reading. But. Oh, yeah. Don't read those because they're, no. they're probably telling you the worst case scenarios. Yeah, and it's all worst case. It's like three oh. months of shock and awe. But I'm uh, part of a support group called Marine Moms. So we oh, good. are able to talk to each other. We all pretty much have the same view. You know, we... We don't want our kids to go, but we are so proud of them and we do want them to go. And, you know, it's just a, a jumble of all right. that. Right. You want them to do and follow their own desires and their own goals. But, it, yeah, that would be really hard. Really yes, hard. Yes, it is. You want them to be a man and just to stand up and to, to test their mettle. And, and I think he can do it. I know he can barring anything, you know, medical that happens to one, one of these young men that I think they can do it, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's hard. So you are a writer, speaker, and you speak at conferences and, um, and you run your business. I mean, you know, it's kind of a business because you're doing, you know, I'm sure you're having to, you know, figure out like where you're gonna, you know, spend your time and who's going to pay you and all that stuff. So Tell me what what would you say is the best business advice you've ever gotten for doing what you're doing now? Okay, that is another really good question. Um, so basically, I write books for um, Becky Books, which was spearheaded by Dr. Halissa Elwine, and she's um, an excellent uh teacher and mentor. She's my mentor. And so she wanted to provide books that were short and in-depth that people could go into something in-depth without feeling like they're drinking out of the fire hose and study something Mm -hmm. in a non-threatening way where it's just fun and yet very scholarly, but just enough. So she started that and picked out some some women, uh, six or seven women to be a part of that. So that's the books that I write for. But each person writes their own books and we all, uh, you know, agree on the books. So I have her advice all the time because she's just such a wise person that I've been able to speak speak to on on these on these books. Ex great editor. I mean, she's really really been very instrumental. Um, and she has given me the best advice as far as being a writer. I got from her, and she had she told me she said, "Never have a person proofread your books that wants to flatter you or." really likes you a lot or you know what I mean really doesn't want to offend you or whatever because when you're proofreading you really want your audience to get information you're not so much about your ego that didn't I do a good job (laughs) so finding really good proofreaders that are detached from needing to please you is a big big part of that Mm, that is good yes I appreciate that piece of advice was very very helpful and then I and then I got advice and I'm trying to remember the source of the advice um I don't even know. It probably was on Facebook or something, but was to write your list down each day of the things you need to do the next day so you can let go and you know that it's written on paper. Right. And you're not replaying in your mind. Don't forget you have to do this tomorrow. It's written down so I don't have to keep recalling it to make sure I can recall it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a big, big, huge piece of um being able to let go at the end of the day so that I'm not consumed by my job that I do my, so. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that too. And I like, I like doing that. It, it does. Yeah. Having a list of, you know, okay, I'll do these tomorrow. It just, it does putting them on a list almost like, yeah, takes the burden off for a little while. Yes. I don't have to continually generate recall. Mm -hmm. And so I think that allows my mind to rest. I like to, I like to separate from it so that when I return to it, I'm fresh with fresh eyes. Yeah, yeah. So another question about that is think back, you know, to when you were just starting out. What would you, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your former self back there, back then, give them a piece of advice? What would you say to Robin way back then? Oh, goodness. Well, this one is a glaring one for me. Um, I would say to not care so much what people think of you or what you think they're thinking of you. Because mm, that's very good. Are they're not thinking of you. <laughs> <laughs> I think they are and they're not. But I think that's been a very big piece for me is to just do my best. And that is what I can do. 
right. and not worry about everyone else and their opinion or judgment of how I should be. And when you work in the world of religion, of course, that's a very difficult task because everyone knows everything and everybody, you know, just you have a lot of judgment and you have a lot of very strongly held opinions attached to very strong emotions and childhood agendas and adult agendas and wounds and all of these things. So uh, that's my advice was all those years I was just fastidiously worried about this person's opinion and offending that person or all of that was so much wasted energy because it never helped when I worried about it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Do as your best. So that's really good advice. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Just do what you can do and not, you know, not worry about what's happening to the right or to the left of you. And, and two, you're so right about most people are just doing their own thing. Most people, <laughs> you know, they're not even aware of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not even really thinking much about you and what you what your agenda is or what you're writing or, you know, they'll they'll find it when they find it. But there, it's not like they're consumed with it where where we're so self-conscious about it, you know, and I think yeah. that comes with the older um, I get, the more I see that to be true. At first, you're just like, oh, what will they think about me? You know, and now it's like, oh, what, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I know. And that's part of just, I love, um, you know, being in my late forties, that's so, so freeing where, you know, in your thirties, I feel like you're so shackled to other people's views. And then all of a sudden, ah, eh, you know, yeah, <laughs> I've gotten the fruit through this far. I can just, you know, yeah. I remember being on a plane one time and I remember, you know, you just have these teachable moments where you're just so teachable and someone says the right thing. And I'm, I'm on a plane heading to some, some teaching, uh, for a presentation I was doing, and we were, I was in, going to Chicago, and and the, the flight attendant said, sit back and relax or sit up and be nervous. Either way, you're getting to Chicago. Oh, that <laughs> was hilarious. I know. So you can choose how you want to get there, but you, that's where you're going, you know. So I remember thinking, what a life lesson. I'm just, I think I'll sit back and relax and, yeah. and just get to Chicago. I remember one time I had this, this dinner party, like a luncheon, and I had made this lasagna, and I felt like I had, it was too dry. And I remember just really wanting these people to like this lasagna because I was trying to sort of impress them. And I was, I was in my early 30s. And I remember just kind of being sad that lasagna wasn't that great. And then a few weeks later, running into those people and saying, gosh, I'm so sorry that lasagna was dry. And they're like, we had lasagna? Like, they didn't even remember <laughs> they ate. And I'm all worried that they probably think, don't think I'm a good cook. I mean, just yes. these things, yeah, that you would go back and tell yourself. Like, yeah. they don't remember for all they know you had spaghetti you know (laughs) yeah yeah I used to do that I think when we when we would entertain just kind of making sure that everything was just just right you know no dust bunnies you know in the corner and you know just cleaning everything and putting everything just right and really they're just coming to hang out with you yes you know so um and they probably don't even I mean they'll never remember all that but they will remember just connecting you know with yes. you that's the important or if you're part. so frazzled and exhausted from preparations that you can't even enjoy it you know yeah that's no fun yeah no it's true yeah. true well so what are you reading these days i can't i have been waiting to ask you that question because i'm i know you're gonna have some great answer i'm like I wonder what she's reading i'm just like so curious because i know I mean, like, you're probably one of the smartest people I know. So I'm like, I wonder what she's reading. It's kind of like, you know, you want to know what Beth Moore's reading. You want to know what Robin Gold's reading. In my world, I want to know what Robin Gold's reading. Oh, man, I want to know what you're reading. Well, um, I always have a few books going. I'm one of those people. Oh, yeah. um, but one really interesting book I'm reading is called The Secret Life of Plants. Hmm. And that's by, I think it's Christopher Bird and... Uh, another author, two authors wrote it, and it's actually it, very interesting. It, it talks about the relationship between plants and humans, and there's a lot of weird interaction with how, food harvesting, and oh, it's very, very interesting. I'm not done it yet. I'm hmm. just in the first three or four chapters. It's very, very interesting. So I really enjoyed that um, kind of weird book, and I'm reading a book by Ellen Langer, I think her name is, and she wrote a book called Mindfulness. 
And that's a wonderful book about basically um, you that how much control your mind does have over your reality, even your physical reality, um, and how to harness that for good and and to really um, be intentional in, in in your steps in life. So I've I've got that, and then the book that I'm reading for pleasure, which is almost unheard of because I read so much for my work that yeah. I really don't have a lot of time for any pleasure reading, but I'm reading a book called Catherine of Aragon by Alison Weir. I read all her books. She writes about medieval monarchy. And so this was one of Henry VIII's wives. So that's a big, huge fat book that I got that I just started. And I'm reading a book by Bill Cloud called Esau Rising, which is about the political scene now. And that's actually a really, that's a, that's a nail biting page turner. It's a good one. Esau Rising. I think I've heard of that. And I don't remember where. Are you? Is it? It's not a. Is it a recent book? I think it came out. Um, it's not a recent. Few months ago, oh, maybe okay. six months ago. Bill Cloud is a personal friend of mine, and he's an exceptional teacher. I think he's. I would say he's a mentor. Mm-hmm. Um, and and just him. This book was long overdue, and he did a great job. It's a really really good book. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that sounds. That sounds really good. Wow. That's so you hop from one book to the next. I I have usually like two books. I have like usually an industry book, which I don't have that right now. I haven't I haven't picked one up yet. I'm kind of in between and then um I usually have one for for fun or pleasure, or whatever. And then one I just kind of a magazine usually that I hang have hanging around. But uh so you do you do different ones, so you just like decide, oh, I want to pick this up. I'm in yes. that kind of mood. It yeah. depends what I'm doing. If I'm traveling, I want my soft cover books that fit in my laptop bag. Mm-hmm. When I'm home, I have my big Catherine Aragon book. And uh, and when I'm on an airplane, I'm not reading Esau Rising in front of others. <laughs> so people, oh, right. Reading, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it just does depend on on what I'm doing, and 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 I'm not. I, I don't want to have several books going at once, but for some reason, I always do. Yeah, I feel I like think... I'm not the type of person that would do that, but that's all I do. So I must be that type of person. I think so. that's fine. I mean, I I like having different books because you're you can be in different moods, and like you said, you have different things that you need. You know, like you're not going to take a huge book, you know, big coffee right. table size book on right. on the plane. But um, for my for a beach read, I usually like to get something that is, um, and I'm crazy about finding the right book. It has to be. Mm-hmm. Here's my criteria: it has to be exciting, and it has to be in short chapters, because I I want to feel accomplished <laughs> when yes. I when I get to the beach. Like if I'm sitting there, I want to be able to read a chapter. And then because inevitably somebody will say, hey, let's build a sandcastle or let's go for a walk or let's go back into the water. So I want to feel like, oh, I'll just like two minutes and I'm going to finish this chapter. And then then I feel like I have accomplished something like, oh, I got done yeah. three chapters. But and I can't. There's a designated pause. Yeah. And that's nice. And actually, that's how my books are written. Actually, they're very specifically made that way, that each chapter is very, very short. So that you can get a nugget and be done with that nugget, move on to the next one, and then they all kind of come together at the end. So yeah, that's awesome. What uh, what three things are you loving these days? So that is a good question. Um, All your questions are good, and I think (laughs) nice for people to hear. So right now, I'm very into my fireplace because it's fall, and I love a wood burning fireplace. That's since I was a child. That's exactly. Um, my my happy place is in front of a fireplace. Um, I'm really into Vermont apples. I'm living in Vermont currently, and Vermont apples are so good. And so I'm into baking things with apple, cooking things with apples, and I'm really into I've, I'm really into my essential oils too. Actually, I'm more and more getting into that, feeling like it helps me um, focus. And um, so really, so th- those would probably be the three things I'm really into right now. Yeah. What oils are you, um, are you liking? So right now I'm obsessed with frankincense and of course we're yeah. in Sukkot, Sukkot right now, which is when, when uh, we celebrate the birth of the Messiah and that was a gift brought to him. So I have my, my big amount of, of frankincense here. And then um, I'm into, I like young living and doTERRA oils. So I don't, mm-hmm choose between the two I use both so I like I'm really into thieves and I don't want to get get sick so I use thieves all the time 
Um, and I like um, Serenity from doTERRA. They have a really good peaceful blend. So that helps mm-hmm. me out that every night. Serenity. Does that help you sleep? Is that yes. something that... And do you use one of those diffusers or do you just like... Yes. You do? I, I put it on. I bring it with me. I have a diffuser. And uh, I bring my diffuser with me places. And oh, I wow. leave spray for my hands and for things that in hotels. I spray it on the remote for the TV. And I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, you, you get on planes and you're just so many viruses. So Is it like, is Thieves like a um, antibacteria kind yes. of? Yes. But it's, it's a, a natural... Huge- Mm-hmm. And it's a blend of oils that there's a really interesting story. Probably we don't have time for it, but about looting happening. I think this was in the, in the 1600s during Black Plague. And they said, we'll hang you or tell us why you're not dying. And this oh. was their concoction oh, that wow. they had discovered um, that that and it really works. Whenever someone's getting a cold, if I use it, I won't get the cold. It'll just be very mild. Wow. So I, it, it's, I have vetted it strongly. So. It's a, mm. it's a good, it's a good one. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. I'm going to have to try that. Yeah. I've not, I've heard of it, but I didn't really know like what the, you know, how it worked. So it's kind of a, like it, bay, it keeps things at bay. Like it does. It's actually operates on, I think frequencies, oddly enough that there's a frequency to something and that counteracts that frequency. I mean, I've read different, uh, different things about the oils because I was a little skeptical at first, just, well, these are oils. How are they going to help me? But there is, if you ever sit through any of those teachings, either one of those companies, I mean, I, they're, they're, it's interesting. It's very mm-hmm. fascinating. It's the reasons in the Bible so much. These yeah. oils are really powerful. So mm-hmm. I think I, I have found them to be helpful. Another thing I'm really into is I actually got rid of all my printed sheets and I use just white sheets now. <laughs> this is my <sighs> last week. So I can just cleanse my palette at night and just yeah. Go, all my bedding and everything is all just pure white. So I'm loving that actually. Too. I like that. White sheets. Okay. Yeah. Symbolically to let go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. Well, thank you so much, Robin, for coming on. This has been so fun. And and interesting, after all these years, getting to know you a little bit deeper and going into all these questions I'd always wanted to ask. And we just didn't, you know, we talked about when we get together, we, we're just girlfriends, you know, getting together. Yes. And, and I always go deep. We pass through the superficial go right into the. <laughs> that's right. We go right into it. Yeah. And then we go right back out and, and indulge in our reality TV fun stuff. So yes. that's, those are yes. the two. We, we go to two extremes yes. <laughs> when we get I would together. I say that we characterize it, yes. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode of Rising Stories. You can find out how to connect with Robin and all the links from the show at kareensanderfer.com under Rising Stories Podcast. Make sure you catch next week's episode when we have a Christmas conversation on Rising Stories Podcast. Music is by Ben Sound, and this podcast has been sponsored by Brentwood Life Coach. Thanks for listening, and keep rising in your own story.